Good afternoon, everyone. Can we please all settle down, turn your phones on silent, and let me present to you Wesley from Flusk. Please give a round of applause. Hi, everyone. Thanks for uh, attending this uh, talk. So today I'd like to talk to you about uh, how to finally monitor a bubble application. We know it's kind of a pain when building with a bubble. It's really hard, and we have three main problems. The first one is actually to explore logs. If you use bubble, you probably know that it is really hard to use the, the bubble logs tab. It's really hard to explore the logs. Then it's also really hard to catch unexpected errors. If you didn't set up something really specific, you just don't know when your user face errors. And the third problem we have it's really hard to have a global view of an app's performance. So I'm Wesley, and my co-founder Victor is just here in the room, and uh, we are uh, the CEOs at Flusk. We've been from freelancers to educator. We did bubble freelancing for a few years, and then we've been into education at Otto, who are here in the room. And we're driven by curiosity, not degrees. We both self-autodidacts, and I quit school uh, last year to focus on Flusk. I told you about the auto team where we met with Victor, and I know Thibaut is in the room. And Thibaut, I know exactly how your worst nightmare looks like when it comes to bubble. It's actually the same for Antonin. I know who he is, but I know exactly what his worst nightmare looks like. And it's exactly the same for Loren. I know guys exactly how it looks like, and you cannot um, say it's wrong, it really looks like that. And you can't say it's false. On the other hand, in the auto team, we have Amandine. And I know Amandine is not really into bubble. She uses uh, all the NOCA tools for all the purposes. And I know, Amandine, what your biggest dream looks like in terms of UX in terms of perfect shapes, of perfect shadows, I know how it looks like. It looks like that, <laughs> right? And at Flusk, we like to create solution. And we were like with Victor, OK, could we not transform this on the left with the UX on the right? Would that be possible for our bubble users? And that's why we took this pull all the logs from your bubble application, they go into a big factory called Flask, and where the chief of operations is Victor, and it becomes this. So let's have a look at this. This is actually the tab you saw before refactored. This is a log, and you can see here each node being a step of the workflow. We really wanna, want to make it look like a make.com scenario with each node, as I told you, representing a step of the workflow. And you can see when it's green here, everything goes well. But when it's red, it means there is an error. And it's really, really easier to see it this way than the previous native bubble way, right? If I click here, I can get a lot of context about the error. I can know exactly what's the error code, what's the data passing through this workflow, and why it actually crashes, right? So that's the visual viewer, and that's our solution to the first problem I introduced you. Now, the second problem. It's about catching unexpected errors. And now I'd like to introduce you to Philip. This is Philip. And Philip has a great idea. He wants to create a bookmaking application. So for those who don't know what it is, it's basically there is a sports match. And you can bet some money on the sports match, on the winner. And if you're right, you go out, you go out with more money. And if you lose, you just lose the money. right? And Philip doesn't know how to code. Philip is hearing about Bubble. He's hearing about Stripe to capture payments. And he also hears about Otto to tell them how to do that. 
So we have Philip, Bubble and Stripe, and Otto and teaching, so Thibaut teaching Philip how to build that. So Philip built the app, everything is going well, he's on fire, he already has 10k users, and it's soon the death of all those you know, BetClick, Winamax, Unibet, they are really afraid of Philip. <laughs> but we, are, we have a problem. Tonight there is a match between Barcelona and Paris Saint-Germain, right? It's false. And this is part of the users, of Philip users, a little part, a representative part. And you can see next to each other the money they bet. So if we take the example of this user, he actually bet $2,220 on Paris. And he's about to pay. He's about to pay, but he faces a problem. This is the problem. <laughs> it's a Stripe error. He faces a Stripe error. And this user was really happy with Philip's application, but now he, d he can't pay, so he'll get back to Unibet. And Philip lost the customer, and he also lost money. And Philip was at the beach drinking a morito. He doesn't have any idea about that. He don't know what happened, right? And let's synthesize this theory. If we assume that one out of 10 payments are going through an error, this is a lot, I have to admit, but let's suppose. If we say that the average bet is 50 bucks, and that we have 5,000 users betting on the bet, you see me coming, I know you, this means 20K lost in revenue for Philip. And we at Flask have a solution for that starting at only $30. A month. <laughs> Obviously. This is one of what I want to introduce to you. It's our error monitoring. So it looks a bit complex, but it's not that complex. I'll, I'll explain it to you. You have here a dashboard with each single line representing an error happening on your app. So let's take the first one. This is an error that happened for the first time three days ago. I hope you can see the screen and last seen four hours ago on version live, and it affected four users, and it happened five times. I think I went too fast, yeah. If I click on this error, I can have a bit more context. I can have, sorry. I can have here the exact error message, some details about the last occurrence, the first occurrence, the version it appeared on, the origin and all that. I can see the status of the issue here and I can manually resolve it if I fixed it in my app. The occurrence, one more time, the impacted users and a quick chart. But what's really interesting here and will help you a lot is the occurrences tab here. If I go here, I can see all the times this error appeared. To who? Here to a visitor. Here to Nick. On which page? And this average thing is really helpful. Because whenever an error is fed by a user on your application, we take a screenshot of what the user was currently seeing, helping you a lot to debug. So combine this with the previous visual lower, uh, with visual log viewer, and it, it will make your heart, life really easier. You can see also the impacted users. So you can see that Nick faced this error four times, and all that. So now. You all know what this is, right? And we all hate this, right? We pull all your logs from your app, so we have a lot of data about the current status and the current activity of your app. And that's why we developed the feature of actually smart deployment, allowing you to schedule a deployment for when no one is live. So basically, that was the presentation of the monitoring. It was a bit technical, but I hope you liked it. Now, if you have some questions, I'm all ears. Do you guys have any questions? Yes. Or was it that clear? Yeah. Hi, I'm Niklas. Um, 
My question is, you have the analysis of the problem. Uh, do you have also a kind of a solution proposal uh, as a tutorial or a resource to help uh, the user finding uh, where to look at? He can see the error, but does he can see how to fix it? Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> no, actually, we don't have that for the moment because it's really specific to the errors, and it can come from different sources, such as plugins, API. So it's really complex, but no, at the moment, we can do that. Hey, guys. Great speech. How do you compare yourself to Nscale? Because they're kind of doing something quite similar. They're also pulling out the logs. They're visualizing them and helping you to monitor the errors. How do you think you stand out? Thanks. Yeah, uh, I think uh, we make the visualizing uh, easier in the make.com way, and so that you can really visualize the log in a row, which as a scale can do. Uh, and also, in the, in the error monitoring, we have a few features, uh, such as the screenshot, which is really helpful, and the smart deployment, that can help you a lot. And uh, yeah, try it out, and you'll see. For sure, <laughs> thanks. Um, <clears throat> thank you very much for this presentation, Victor. Uh, I was just wondering, so this uh, looks really, really uh, convenient when you are not a uh, bubble developer. Nevertheless, what I didn't understand yet is, will that be a plugin on bubble or not? Actually, for the logs part, you don't have to install anything. You just have to give us the collaborator access so that we can pull your logs. Uh, the only thing we need a, pl a plugin to is actually taking a screenshot. That's why uh, you need the plugin, but otherwise it's just plug in, give the collaborator access, and that's everything. All right, thank you. And will that be free or? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> so do you, you do catch the, the backend log errors? Do you also catch frontend errors, or do you have to like? do something extra to get no, logged sure. as well. Every logs are captured. OK, so also front-end logs yeah, done everything. by everything. plugin, for example. Yeah, OK, sure. cool. And how do you track the user's activity? Because it's like a pretty, it's not a field on the bubbles, user field. So I'm pretty interested in like how you got that to work. Yeah, so um, we have two ways to do that. The first one is to analyze the logs. So for example, if you have no logs on your app for the last five minutes, it's likely that you have no users live. But it's not a perfect way to do it. So we developed, we implemented in the plugin a little thing that pings our server every time a user uh, has a page open. And we know that we, when we don't receive any signal, any ping from any page of your app, we know that there is no one here. Very smart. Uh, I have two questions. First is, um, is uh, is the tool consumer double uh, work woo? unit? Woo? <laughs> woo. And my second question, I think you show me, but I don't remember. Uh, can we open the 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 tab logs from your tool to Bubble? When I click on your on your tool, can yeah. I be redir redirected to Bubble logs to see the history? Actually, it's not possible. But Victor, have you heard this one? <laughs> <laughs> that could be an idea, definitely. Okay. And the first one, does it consume workload units? So yes. no, we do not consume any workload units. Uh, the, the only time we could consume is actually when we take a screenshot and we send it back to our server so that you can see it. But it's not the case because it's an API call happening in the front end and they not consume any workload units. Hi, Wesley. So thank you for the great presentation. Um, maybe it's just me, but uh, I didn't get it. Uh, when, when, it when, when there's a lock, if it's uh, connected to some other locks, does it uh, combine in a one row? Or yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah, because I, I didn't, couldn't see it. Maybe it's just me, but. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Yeah. Maybe it was not clear. Um, because I think that's the a main issue for me in Bubble is that, that, that Sometimes the rows are connected to each other, and you know it's hard to see in bubble what what is going on. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, all right. My explanation is going to be a little bit technical, maybe. But you see that uh, tab, this one. Yeah. This is actually uh, one log, 
And if you click on Doom this workflow, you actually have a lot of workflow then. When you click here, all the workflow you see appearing here are this line. So we combine all the logs from a single workflow and made them in a row. Thank you. That was my question. Thanks, Wesley. Straight to the point, great presentation. Uh, my question is, uh, do your software pushes information towards um, a third party app or something? Do you send webhooks in case of errors or something like that? Do you do external notification, how it works, basically? Yeah, definitely. I didn't go uh, through this part of the presentation, but it's actually uh, this tab, which is about alerting, just here. Uh, it's not yet done, so I didn't want to present it and uh, not present it when it's completely done. But yeah, for sure, you can put uh, custom triggers on error, uh, sending you webhooks to wherever you want, Slack, uh, your custom bubble app, or wherever. So for any type of error, so for any type of logs, when you have changes on your live version, when you have a new collabor collaborator added, all that stuff, you can send custom webhooks. I think we are over for the q and I have to give uh, five minutes uh, for the people to enter and uh, leave the room between the first and the second conference, which is about security. Um, so yeah, do we have any other question? Perfect, so let's take a five minute break.